Thank you for clicking on this Fun with Pete and Cherry video. I'm your host, Mr. Julian. This is your co-host, Tipsy. Happy Easter morning. Today I return from my self-imposed exile to review a scotch I've been meaning to review for a long time. Uh, a really, really nice scotch. Glen Morangy, extremely rare, 18-year-old scotch. Now, Glen Morangy is a Highland Scotch, as you know, it has the tallest stills in the industry, and what that means is that it produces a very light flavored spirit. And uh, as I said when I when I uh, reviewed the ten year old spirit, Glenmore and G original, it, it was a little too light for me. I don't crave, as I said, delicacy in my Scotch. I do like things to be a little bold, and though this eighteen year old expression is still light, it is also, in its own way, quite bold. And, uh, let's, uh, let's get into it. Hmm. Hmm. Top of the bottle is sort of hay and bready. Smell. And let's spread that around a little bit. Caramel. bit of hay, apple, red apple, and let's go in for the final test. A little bit of hay and apple from the nose you taste initially, and then, boy, slipping in right behind that, especially when you take that first big inhale. The real power comes in. A powerful burst of tropical fruit flavor that really coats your entire esophagus, mouth, stomach, lungs, apricot, bursting, plum, deep. Mm. And not a sharp edge anywhere. All fully rounded and wrapped together. Beautiful, beautiful scotch. Um, mm. So far beyond the tin, in my opinion, is to be uh, all, all indescribable, all, almost unrecognizable as the same spirit. Now, if you can see the size of the gulps I'm taking there quite subconsciously, that's because there's nothing, uh, there's no alcohol edge or, or, or burn to resist just wanting to take as much in of that delicious flavor as, as you possibly can. That's what separates a decent scotch from a magnificent one. Oh. And uh, Chance has given me the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity, to uh, uh, sit directly across from Dr. Bill Lumsden, who uh, is the 
master distiller of Glen Morangy, who has uh, arranged all of their scotches and uh, designed them, you might say. And, and to tell him, as I did, that I that uh, this is a whiskey fest in New York, that uh, for my money, it was extremely hard to find any scotch uh, for any price that topped this one, and, uh, and I say the same to you now. Uh, that is that is very much the case. Um, if there was one scotch that... Sorry, no scotch. If there was um, any whiskey that has the same uh, depth of fruit flavor uh, on the, uh, the follow-through, it would have been Jameson's rarest vintage reserve, and that is a $500 bottle of scotch. Oh, sorry, a bottle of Irish whiskey. Uh, so this is uh, just just exceptional, uh, really, just exceptional. By the way, the, um, the makeup here is uh, no peat. They use uh, all Glen Morangies start with the ten year old, which is the original, and in this case, after the ten. Two thirds were given eight years in in uh, eight more years in bourbon barrels, and uh, one third were given eight years in sherry barrels. So they were mixed back together, married, and this is what you got. Now um, you wouldn't necessarily notice that that was exactly what it was. It's not a sherry monster in any sense. Uh, it's just. Uh, Clearly, it's it's worked in very very well to provide that um, big booming fruit flavor. Stop that! Stop. Um, while maintaining the Glen Morangy lightness, and uh, and I guess that's about all I have to say about uh, about Glen Morangy, uh, eighteen year old. If you can get a, except a, a, I'll, I'll concede the. The, they've always been good that I've had, but they do vary a little bit. Some are some are more light, some are more tangy, tangy than others. And uh, I'm starting to find these variations in in Scotch uh, more and more common uh, as I become more experienced. It's it's very interesting. This is probably the best Glenmore G18 uh, that I've ever had. So uh, I'm actually going to give this. A rating of 9.4, so very, very, very high. Uh, and before I go, I would just say uh, of my of my brief exile of, of a couple months. You know, um, if you're gonna drink, you have to moderate yourself. And uh, you know, taking a couple months of off was was part of my doing that. If you feel, uh, as I came to, that you haven't been t as successful as you should in moderating yourself, then you have to take a break. Uh, and this is a wiser way of going about things than just deciding that you're fine to drink as much as you want until you go insane and hit rock bottom and then you have to quit for life. That mode of thinking only causes people who should be trying to get better to focus on getting worse instead. It's, it's a stupid way of looking at things. And that's all I have. Thank you for tuning in and uh, I'll see you again soon.